Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a radical system. We have the square root of x plus the square root of y plus 1 equals 1 and we have the square root of x plus 1 plus square root of y equals 1. So they're both equal to 1 which is nice and I'll be presenting two methods. We're also going to be looking at a function, the graph of a function which is going to give us some good ideas. All right, let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do the obvious. I'll square both sides. When I square both sides in the first equation, I get 1 again. And let's go ahead and expand it. a plus b quantity squared, so this is going to give me x, y plus 1, and 2 times x times y plus 1 under the radical. And this equals 1. 1 cancels out, leaving us with x plus y plus 2 times the quantity x times y plus 1. Of course, square root of that equals 0. So that's going to be one of the equations that I'm getting. And then I'll do the same thing for the second equation, and I'll get a similar equation, and then I'll work together with those. So if you start off with x plus 1, square root of that, plus the square root of y, and square both sides, you're going to get x plus 1 plus y plus 2 times the square root of x plus 1 times y and that is going to equal 1 and again just like before 1 is going to cancel out and that leaves us with x plus y plus 2 times I might write the y first x plus 1 this is equal to 0 and I also know that this equation from the first one is equal to 0 now, what is that supposed to mean when two equations are equal to zero? That means they're equal to each other, right? If two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. So from here, we can basically set these two equations equal to each other, and let's see what happens. A lot of things are going to simplify, so bear with me. Set this equal to the other one. And then x plus y cancels out. So from both sides, x plus y cancels out. And obviously, after that, 2 cancels out. Square roots, you can square both sides and get the following. y times x plus 1 equals x times y plus 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? That kind of looks weird if you don't distribute. Let's go ahead and distribute and simplify. We get xy plus y equals xy plus x. And this is amazing, isn't it? Because we get x equals y from here. xy cancels out and we end up with x equals y, which is awesome. So x equals y is something that can be used in one of the equations. I'll use the first one. So let me rewrite the first equation. Square root of x plus square root of y plus 1 equals 1. Now I'm going to replace y with x. You can also replace x with y. It doesn't matter. You get the same thing. But I just like replacing y with x so that I can get an equation in terms of x. I know I took too much. So let, let me stop. So if you replace y with x, you get square root of x plus the square root of x plus 1 equals 1. Again, we can square both sides, but it will be better. Now, what happens if you square both sides? Let me tell you real quick. You're going to get x plus x plus 1 plus 2 times the square root of x squared plus x equals 1. And then these two are going to cancel out. You have to put the 2x on the other side, square both sides again, and that's going to give you... 4x squared, we're going to get 4x squared from both sides, so on and so forth. That's a long story. But anyways, I want to isolate this and then square both sides. Okay. Now, if you square both sides, you get the following. x plus 1 equals 1 minus 2 times square root of x plus x. x cancels out. 1 cancels out, leaving us with 0, which means x is equal to 0. But we just said y equals x, right? That was our finding. So... If x is equal to 0, then y is also equal to 0. All right? By substitution, we get the answer. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. Second method obviously has a different approach to the problem, and I'm also going to show you uh, the graph of a function. Not show you, but we're, we're kind of uh, graphing it roughly. Anyway, so we got square root of x plus the square root of y plus 1 equals 1 and square root of x plus 1 
plus the square root of y equals 1. So we kind of see a, a type of symmetry here, which is nice. Since both of these equations are equal to 1, I'm going to set them equal to each other, starting with the right-hand side. Square root of x plus 1 plus square root of y is the same thing as square root of x plus the square root of y plus 1. Very cool, right? Now, uh, this doesn't make more sense or much sense unless I put the same variables on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract square root of x and square root of y. And this will be much more meaningful. Now, notice that we are looking at a function evaluated at two different points, if you consider x and y to be constants, of course, right? So I kind of have a function, something like f of z equals square root of z plus 1 minus the square root of z. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function a little bit. First of all, what is the domain of this function, right? Well, the domain of this function is for z values for which z plus 1 is equal to, is greater or equal to 0 and z is greater or equal to 0. But guess what? If z is greater than or equal to 0, then z plus 1 automatically becomes greater or equal to 0. Therefore, this is going to be our domain. So z needs to be non-negative. All right? So that's the domain. I can also write the domain as 0 to infinity, a half open or half closed interval. Did I say half open? I can't believe that. Anyways, so we're considering this function. Let's go ahead and differentiate this function and see what happens with the derivative. So this is a radical function, so we can differentiate it as 1 over 2 times square root of z plus 1, and the other one as 1 over 2 times the square root of z. If I, and I, of course, I want to set it equal to 0 and find the critical points. But if you make a common denominator, you get the following from f prime. Square root of z minus the square root of z plus 1 divided by 2 times the square root of z squared plus z. And it's equal to 0. Obviously, if you set it equal to 0 from here, you're not going to get any solutions because the problem is z can never equal z plus 1. Possible. Because this expression, the so square root of z plus 1, is always going to be greater than square root of z for obvious reasons. Therefore, this is always going to be a negative expression, which means f of z is always decreasing. Now, here's one thing that I wanted to say. We, we looked at this function f of z, and I said it's evaluated, yes. So this is f of x, and this is f of y, because our function is evaluated at those points. So what's that supposed to mean if f is always decreasing, and we got f of x equals f of y? It just means that our function is going to be injective if it's always decreasing, and you get two different images, that means x equals y from here. And if you look at the graph of this function, which I didn't do nicely with Desmos or anything else, I'm just going to do a rough sketch for you guys. It's obviously going to start at uh, positive values, and 0 is included. So for 0, this function f of z equals square root of z plus 1 minus the square root of z. For z equals 0, it's going to give us 1, so it's going to start at 0, 1. And it's just going to constantly decrease. And when z approaches infinity, this is z, this is f of z, whatever you want to call that. When z approaches infinity, this is going to approach 0. If you kind of take a look at the limit, you're going to notice that. And, which means we only got, we only got one solution, that is 0, 0, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.